Because <laughs> we're moving towards a domestic installer, folks. You've got to be thinking about the next bigger picture. OK, let's look at um, clipping distances for steel wire armoured cable. Find the appendices. Don't shout it out. OK, I regret that. And I. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in capturing any time soon. <laughs> I've just realised. So I want clipping distances for find the appendices for me. Right, Dan, what page are you on? I want to. One second. Okay. John, what page are you on? Uh, 141. Exactly. Agree. Yeah, brilliant. I'm on 141 as well. And we've probably done some annotations at the bottom, agreed. And we've mm -hmm. seen this, but we're now looking at armoured. Which columns am I using now, uh, John? Which columns am I using to work out my horizontal and vertical clipping distances of SWA cable? Uh, six and seven. Six and, and yeah, brilliant. And I wrote above mine SWA, didn't I? You probably did yeah. something similar on yours, did you? Uh, yeah, I've done. Okay. Yeah. Column number one. Ed, what's column one, number one talking about? Uh, that's the diameter of the cable. Yeah, brilliant. So we're looking at the actual diameter of the major axes of the cable itself. Okay, yeah. not the conductor size. So as we look at that, we know the diameter up to and including nine mil is the first one. Do they believe they make a steel wire armoured cable that is nine mil or less in diameter? No, they don't. So if we look across there, we've got some hash lines in columns six and seven. Agreed? Yep. So the diameter must be greater than nine mil before we can even consider clipping it. So let's say our diameter of our cable was 35 mil, Dan. So we've got a diameter yes. of cable of 35 mil. Can you tell me the horizontal clipping distances for maximums? 450. Good. And Gramos, if you're there, what's the yeah. vertical clipping distance? He keeps freezing, doesn't he? 600. Well done, 600, yeah. <laughs> In a minute, you'll move. <laughs> so, yeah, 600. So we can see, so, yeah, 4, 450 horizontal and 600 uh, vertically are our maximum clipping distances. How do we secure steel armoured cables to the fabric of the building? Saddles. Saddles. Okay, anyone else? Saddles. Oh, there's another one. It cleats. It is. Well done, John. I've got a cleat there. Yeah. See so one whole cleat. So we drill the fabric of the building. We put a screw, obviously a plug in the wall and a screw and our cable cleat. So we open it up. So if I can do this. So if that's my steel rammer cable, we open it up and then obviously we can fix it to the fabric of the building. The screw would normally be at the top. OK, with it hanging down rather than doing it that way around. General rule is we do it that way around. I know we've said before with cable clips, haven't we, that we used to use it to support it. I tend to hang them that way. I'm sure somebody's already commenting. You're doing it wrong, guys. Mm -hmm. well, I haven't done it for 19 years. So I'm doing it wrong for a while. OK, <laughs> so that's a cable cleat. Now, I've seen pictures in exams. Just ask you, what, what is that? I show you a picture of it and say, what is it? Well, that's a cable cleat for securing steel armors. However, what must we ensure throughout the run of a surface wired uh, steel armored system? That we uh, prevent against what we're trying to prevent. Good. And I've got a clip here. This one here is one from Linian, Linian Fire Clips, and that can be used in order to support a steel armor. They come in obviously different sizes. I've got the one I had in the garage. This is fully metal. Okay. You drill a hole in the wall, squeeze it up, and in it goes. And again, on um, on eFix, we've got a, a comparison between the cleat and the Linian Fire Clip as well. OK, in order to support. There's other ways in which you can do it. There are other supports out there as well, but you need to have a metallic clip. How often does that metallic clip have to happen, Ed? Um, so it's up to your discretion, really, but every other one. Maybe. Yeah. Depends yeah. Where, where it is and what it's doing. If it's low yeah. down or high up, yeah, yeah we've got to make an engineering judgment. Yeah, engineering judgment. However, still we're armoured. If there's many of them running in the same direction, often they are not uh, cleated because it would be too long of a process. Dan, how do we secure many armoured cables running in the same direction? What do I we put them on? You do. I don't know. You do. Uh, Grandmas, what do we put cables on for steel armoured if they're all going in the same direction? 
Does not really. Okay. John? Cable tray or Good basket? Lad. Good lad. Piece of cable tray, yeah. So I'm running out of props now. So we've got a piece of cable tray. And we're used to seeing loads of steel or armoured cables secured on basket, tray or ladder. I can't show you the other two, but we've got them obviously in the workshop. Uh, ladder is considerably stronger and therefore can have larger size armoured on them. So ladder racking looks exactly the same as an aluminium ladder if you had it at the side of your house. And it's just used to put really big armoured cables on. Basket tends to be used, can be used for armoured, but it tends to be used where you're running uh, PVC, PVC twin and CPC cables, perhaps through an office ceiling, they tend to use basket. OK, so that's cable tray. So how are we going to secure it to cable tray, our steel armoured? With the... I forgot the name. I see the idea of the question. Cable ties. Yeah, PVC cable ties. I've got a big one because I thought it'd show up better on the camera. So we've got PVC cable ties in order to secure those. And they go through the holes in here. Why is there holes in cable tray? Heat dissipation. God, yes. <laughs> so you can put a cable tie through it? No. To, <laughs> dead right. To dissipate the heat. So we know conductors that lay on here will get hot to allow yeah. air to circulate around them. Brilliant. There is a way now we can put a tie in it, which is not the reason it was perforated in the first place. Great answer. And again, depending on how the cable tray is situated. So if it was that way up, there wouldn't be a problem because the cables would lay there. But once we turn our cable tray this way, or God forbid, maybe have it hang in where the cables are underneath, what have we got to uh, make sure that we prevent against? Premature collapse. And how are we going to do that? Use metal. So we could use a steel, yeah, yeah, yeah steel cable tally. We could, we could bolt it um, a metallic uh, clamp on there to hold it on, but general consensus now is to use a steel cable tie. Okay, in order to secure it. We happy with all of those bits? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Um, bending radius. Turn to the bending radius, which I think you'll find is on page 144. On-site guide, page 144. We're looking at armoured cables with a circular or stranded copper or aluminium conductors. What's the factor to be applied to the actual cable itself in order to work out its bending radius? Which is on that page. What's the factor? For armoured? Yes. Any. Any factor. What's the factor? Factor, factor, come on. Eight. Are you sure? Yep. Sure, oh, that's not, right, sorry, it's six. six because yeah. it's copper, not aluminium. Yeah, it's, it's a big copper, difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the factor is six. However, when you get to really large steel armor cables, we consult the manufacturer of that cable itself. Okay, so this is okay with our smaller armors, etc. But you might find you need to consult with that. So six times the diameter in order to work out the bending radius. Let's turn to page 142, a table that we haven't used yet, but is super important for your exam. Page 142. This is talking about um, spanning between buildings. So steel armoured cable is often used to bridge between buildings. Often that goes underground. So if you had your house and maybe uh, a garage, you might dig a trench and you might lay the cable in the trench and get to your garage. However, if that garage was reasonably close, you might want to send the cable overhead. So you might want to go overhead. The most common cables that we see overhead other than electrical ones on pylons would be telephone cables. OK, and a telephone cable incorporates inside it a catenary. So in other words, we're not hanging our cable. That little tiny phone cable is not hanging on its own conductor. There's actually another piece of steel inside it that actually is supported at both ends. That's actually taking the weight. And this is what happens when we bridge between buildings. So where we go between buildings, you cannot have the armor just hanging on its own weight because obviously that will cause itself issues over time. You have to have it supported to a piece of steel, and that is called a catenary wire. So you'd fix it at the building, you'd pull it tight, and you'd fix it onto the garage, the shed, the outbuilding, another building, and then you'd tie onto it your steel armoured. When we're tying onto it, what are we going to use to tie onto the catenary or steel wire? Are we going to strap it to it? Cable ties. Yep, back into the cable ties, and infrequently throughout that, we might have to introduce steel ones. Okay, 
So again, that's overhead. So th the key word there is catenary. Let's look in here um, on uh, table D2, about three quarters of the way down, cables uh, supported by a catenary. So it's that one just there, couple up from the bottom, supported by a catenary. Yeah. So where we've got cables, steel armoured being a very uh, common cable supported by... Yes, 142, yes. Because you haven't moved, uh, Gramos. I'm a bit concerned. You're, yeah, it looks oh, like you've okay. left. Yeah, got it there, catenary. Right, important we look at the next bit. The, the height, span, maximum span, as long as you want, because what is taking the actual weight of the cable? The catenary. It is. So it doesn't matter how far it goes. Next one over, where it's at a road crossing, the minimum height is... 5.8. Good. Where there is vehicles accessible to the area, so in other words, vehicles can come in and out of that area, whether it be permanently or infrequently, again, the height is? Same. 5.8. What about if the area was in an area where vehicles are not present? 3.5. Good. There's, there you can see some exam questions staring you out in the face. A cable is supported by catenary in an area likely to have traffic, vehicles, whatever words they use, what's the minimum height? 5.8. Catenary wire is to span between two buildings where those buildings have no traffic, so it's just footfall, people walking, minimum height's 3.5. It changes on a caravan park. So when you start looking at special locations and you look at um, a caravan park, it actually bumps that 5.8 up to 6, but we're not going to worry about this at the minute. There is a section on special locations, which I'll probably, that if Matt hasn't done it, I'll do it with you. But but at the moment, I want you to default back to catenary wire, steel armoured on it, 5.8 where there's traffic as a minimum, 3.5 where there's no traffic. OK, happy with those? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, again, I'd probably stick a highlighter pen on those. So I might just rub a little highlighter pen on those. 5.8 and 3.5 is really important. OK, you'll, you'll work out in a few weeks time when I release it to you, you'll work out how I can help you even more on things like that. So look out for that coming soon, things like that. Okay, so we're happy with those. Yes, so we've used that page as a completely different now. We looked at the, the crossing of roads, et cetera, but a catenary wire is very common used in the electrical industry. Okay, I said bury. We're probably going to bury it though. Are we going to go down to a garage at the bottom or are you going to go to a summer house or a gaming room or working from home office now after coronavirus has finally left us, hopefully? And we're going to put it in the ground, agreed? Yeah. yeah. How far into the ground have I got to go? Ooh. Ooh. Come on, Dan, you've done the 18th edition. Is it a metre? Oh, it's one metre. Or 100 mil. There's no oh, rules. Yeah. There's no rules. They say a sufficient depth, recommended 600 mil. Okay, so, there, so that's just over half a metre. So... Yeah, so you've got it again. Where are you? Where you got it in position? Is it likely to be dug? If you go back to the caravan sites, is there likely to be tent pegs hammered into the ground for an awning or a tent? So again, we're looking at about 0.6 of a meter or 600 mil. Yeah. Now, can we just bury that in the ground and throw back all the old uh, material that we've dug out the hole? Can we just chuck it all on top of the armored cable? No, you can't. What have you got to make sure you do before you backfill it? Uh... You have to put something on top, not to hit with the rocks, not to damage the wire. Yeah, so we're looking at making sure we've got maybe it, we lay it on a bed of sharp sand. Really funny one year, one of my lads, one of my 16 year old lads went, Why is it sharp sand? Why didn't it damage the cable? So it's uh, sort of come out ever since then. So you put, say, say like a layer of sharp sand down where you've dug it, put the cable in, and then perhaps another layer of sharp sand or sieve soil, stone free soil before then we start to backfill it. And then we need to identify in some cases, not always, but you sometimes need to identify that there are electrical services buried. So if you think about the mains, um, the electricity board's main cables, where they're dug down a considerable depth, there'll be either tiles or tape saying danger electricity underneath. They used to be made of like, almost like brick-like, now they're more plastic boards. Again, I've got a set of uh, Tresham in the classroom and screwed to the wall. But yeah, as you're digging down for big, you know, like mains cables, the last thing you want to do is hit one of those and actually they identify it on digging that it is below the surface. Okay, I think there,
we've pretty much covered most of the stuff we're going to do in the notes. So we should just whoosh through the notes now. OK, and that's building on stuff that we may have learned in the workshop. And that's building on stuff that we may have learned in the previous six weeks. So we're going to stop it at that point and then we're going to crack through these notes.